Europe's Copernicus Climate Agency is saying 2024 will be the hottest year on record. And Crystal Gomansing has the details from London. She's been looking through that report and can tell us more about uh, the very stark warnings it contains. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Heather. Yes, I was speaking with Carlo Buentempo. He is the director of Copernicus Climate Change Service, and he said, quote, he is virtually certain, based on all of the data, that 2024 will be the warmest year on record. Now, that builds on the fact that 2023 was previously labeled as the warmest year on record. So that is sort of one of those dire situations that are being shared with us today. But we're also being told that scientists uh, have found that global temperatures for the past 12 months were 1.62 degrees higher than levels recorded at the start of the Industrial Revolution. So why is that key? Well, you might recall that number 1.5, keep 1.5 alive. That was the number that global scientists have been using for years, telling leaders that they have to keep the level of warming to that number or around there in order to protect the environment, to limit those extreme weather events and assure there isn't a rapid rise in temperatures. Let's hear a little bit more from what Buntempo had to tell me. We're expecting this to happen, maybe it happened just slightly earlier than, than we thought it was possible, but within the noise. So if you look back at what the uh, WMO, World Meteorological Organization Lead Center for Decadal Predictions said in a statement last year and again this year, there was a very high chance, according to them, that one of the next few years would have been above 1.5. This happened in 24. It could have been 25. It could have been 26. It happened in 24. But it's basically, it was bound to happen because of the warming of the climate system. Now, he says this is all because of the concentration of greenhouse gases building up that a number of world organizations had predicted this, although, as he said, it did happen a little bit earlier than anticipated. Of course, this all comes out, Heather, right before COP29 in Azerbaijan, a time when uh, officials will be looking at the data. And he says there is plenty of data available to show this dire situation and to spur on real action to limit the the level of warming that we're currently seeing. Uh, Crystal, let's talk about Donald Trump figuring in all of this. He has been re-elected president this week. We know that he has called climate change a hoax, that he has promised to increase oil drilling. He's talked about fracking, for example. How does that event um, and how, uh, you know, the United States figures in the world, how might this have an effect at discussions at COP29, which is just ahead? Well, it could potentially have a huge impact. Obviously, the climate is another one of those areas where world leaders look to the United States for leadership to see them sort of setting the stage as one of those big historic polluters. And we know that Donald Trump, during his last time in office, pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, that, of course, was a treaty of organizations and countries agreeing to limit their pollution and come up with plans. So right now, uh, we are hearing from another of organizations who are saying they want to see what the United States is going to do over the next short while. And we're already seeing demonstrations. Just yesterday, the organization, the protest group Just Stop Oil, um, you know, sprayed orange substance all over the U.S. Embassy here in London. So likely we'll see more of those sort of demonstrations raising the issue of the environment. Crystal, thank you very much.